Greetings on this Monday and thanks for being here and starting off the month of February real quickly. It's February the 2nd, it's Groundhog Day and another groundhog I suspect has a target on his back. Punxsutawney Field declaring six more weeks of winter, just as he did last year and somehow managed to escape all vengeance. Nevertheless, we'll talk briefly about your forecast and everything else tonight with the exception of the civil case, the trial that began today in McGoffin County Court. That will be our primary focus. And this is going to be, and even though it may feel like this every day, a kind of a by the seat of my pants uh, procedure or workflow for the evening. I've been in the courtroom with cameras allowed and audio allowed as well with that video since 9 o'clock this morning when the trial began before uh, Judge John David Preston. And I'll be covering as much of the more important parts of testimony as possible. It's unedited, it's unscripted, I'm going by some roughly or loosely written notes in an effort to bring you as much information as I can about the proceedings. And that's basically going to be how we're going to try to operate throughout the extent of the trial, which is slated for three days. Taking the stand today was Greg Motley, an investigator with the Attorney General's Office, Special Office of Prosecutions, McGoffin County Clerk Renee Arnett Shepard, also a Mr. Kim Jevin who, Jevin, who is a political analyst offering expert opinion and maybe some others. I left with a camera still there at around the 4 o'clock hour, and we may have some other testimony to add to that. But we'll begin that testimony and coverage in just a few moments, and we'll be limited to with the exception of a few other announcements towards the latter part of the program as they relate to maybe any calendar or weather updates. That for our programming and coverage this evening. So with that said, I'll be right back after a few words from some of our sponsors. Now for our very first beginning coverage of the civil trial, which began today. A trial, of course, that began after a complaint and a case filed on behalf of John Montgomery, Republican candidate for McGoffin County Judge Executive against County Judge Executive Charles Doc Harden and the McGoffin County Board of Elections. Montgomery alleging in his case that he was not the winner, as should have been, of the November election due to widespread fraud and other activities within the hard administration or campaign with the assistance of others. Several motions to see that he was awarded the victor before trial were denied by Judge John David Preston, and the trial began today, with its first witness being called to testify, that being Greg Motley. Motley identified as a retired Kentucky State Police trooper who for the past many years has been a special investigator with the Attorney General's Office in Kentucky, specifically in their Public Corruption Unit. He testified on the stand that on election day there were 22 complaints in McGoffin County of fraud and other activities. He considered that number to be on the high side by comparison to other counties. He made no specific details for the most part towards any ongoing investigation that we have confirmed on numerous occasions here on the program. He did say it was the first time he'd ever encountered election challengers throughout any investigation of any other election in his experience. He did outline some details about going to the Flat Fork and Johnson Fork precincts, some complaints that were in that area, nothing that resulted uh, in any action being taken on that day. But he did confirm after some questioning that the absentee ballots, all of which and other materials were taken into custody by the Attorney General's office so shortly after the election where those materials remain in the custody today. I asked for all absentee ballots, uh, which and it specifies the particular form, uh, all voter assistance forms, uh, all absentee signature rosters, all absentee ballot envelopes and detachable flags, all absentee ballots, all, uh, all paper ballots. There's a signal I've, I've initialed by each one of those, uh, and then I had a shepherd initial as well when I took the possession of them. Also made a notation at the uh, absentee ballot envelopes and attached flaps uh, and all absentee ballots and the ballots were still locked in the ballot box. Mr. Mobley, did the did Office of Attorney General still have custody of service? Yes, we do. In some further discussion, an objection was made to counsel for Montgomery's motion to enter into discussion and evidence absentee materials and applications. That motion was overruled by Judge Preston. In some cross-examination, 
Bud Adams, representing Charles Harden, requested that, or asked rather, uh, the detective as if hotter elections, which they considered this to be on a local level in November, uh, yielded more complaints, to which he said that they did. And also in cross from the attorney representing the Board of Election members, he had referred to any livestock being seen by the detective on the property belonging to Renee Arnett Shepherd and her husband. Her driveway was brought up in earlier testimony on behalf of um, Officer or Detective Motley, if you will, on behalf of rep attorneys representing John Montgomery, questioning to some degree the layout of her property and the gate that accessed some property that belonged to Arnett Shepard, but not at that time identifying any other details about why he was asking it would come up in later discussion. After Agent Motley was excused, McGoffin County Court Clerk Renee Arnett Shepard was called to testify. Shepard would first go on record as describing her duties as clerk, her position, her title, as well as her duties as a member of the Board of Elections in McGoffin County. She outlined uh, information on several different topics, including election school, which is where election or precinct workers would get their training, uh, how the machines for the voting process are set up, where they come from, uh, how they are used. And also she was questioned about how it would be possible that there would be indiscrepancies in records that were kept during Election Day at the various precincts throughout McGoffin County. And that is 95%. Uh, would you say that, how many would you estimate by percentage uh, had prior experience before this uh, 2014 election cycle? I will Enough, uh, would you say that every precinct had uh, people there that uh, that should have known how to do it, how to draw the form correctly, and do their job? Um, yes, and, and, and just because, like I've said before, and I don't like, and this may, I, I'm going to be honest with you, it doesn't mean they know how to fill out a form. When you get election worker, you're doing good to get somebody with a pulse, because nobody wants to see if they're going to end up in court. So you do well to get someone to see it. So, I mean, it's not odd, and as I stated with Mr. Motley, they, they didn't even fill out half the forms, right? That's not uncommon. Why do you say people are going to end up in court? Because they're scared. But, but, well, why, but getting back to my question, why would you say people because 90% of our elections ends up in a character election since I've been clerk. No one else wants to volunteer to help out. They're not standing in line, but that's what you're asking about. I thought you said, though, that the precinct officers come from uh, a list. Of there is a list, but just because their name's on that list doesn't mean they want to see it. Well, how does somebody come as for the election officer? I go by the list. As for the indiscrepancies that counsel for Montgomery was inquiring, he was referring to out of more than 1,100 absentees voted in McGoffin County on the November election, about 900 did not include a social security number identifying the absentee voter about 600 of the 1100 or plus 1100 did not have a phone number and then of course there were some issues that they cited on occasions throughout several other precincts in McGoffin County where precinct workers did not initial the individual's name who was signing the register to vote and some other irregularities that they allege are all part of a great vast of improprieties in the election. Do you review the uh, statutes regarding election and all the absentee ballots? Me Have you ever reviewed the statutes? For mailing in absentee yeah, reports? Mailing, absent, mailing absentee ballots? No, because I've never had a problem with it. There was nothing to ever question. So do people forget, I guess, to tell you where they're going to be on election day? I don't know if they forget. It's they say employment, that's what we put down. You forget to ask. No, because I didn't know I needed to ask. As I've stated in my deposition prior to today, 
your deputies know they should ask? No, but again, that was never an issue. I never thought that that was something that I had to put on there. Why not? I don't know. Like I said, it, it, it was never done prior to my working as a deputy clerk. So I just assumed that that was, you know, for the voter to put on there. Do you believe that you should have a full application returned to you before you have uh, any sort of absence of ballot materials? Uh, full as to, I always make sure the signature's there. That's, that's my main thing that I look for is that signature. You look for anything else? No. That signature is my main thing. <laughs> Do you want to see a location built in for that correctly? Social security number or paper? We, I stopped requiring social security numbers. And we got this new system because it doesn't print them on in-house um, requests. And because of that, I told the voters not to put that on there because they've been dealing trying to do that, way with that due to confidentiality. So I told them not to stress with their social security number. And they told you that? You told me that? Yeah, it's, it's common knowledge. It doesn't print it on our system. It's not. Great voter registration. I mean, social security numbers now, prints of voter ID. But as far as like, who told you that they're trying to do away with confidentiality? Uh, state board of elections in our training, taking them off the system. Do you have any reason to doubt that 910 of these applications uh, miss social security numbers as identified in the uh, summary judgment motion last year? No, but because again, I told them since the new system was not putting out a field, that was a field that they needed to worry about. Because a lot of people are hesitant of giving that. Have uh, any reason to doubt that 463 of those were missing phone numbers? Yes, you guys. You guys are speculating, and the doctors speak for themselves. No, I don't have any reason. That's not a important deal. So. Do you have any reason to doubt that 354 of these? Uh, Absence of ballot applications or missing any information about where the voter will be on question day. No, because the majority of them are disabled. And like I said, uh, it's a, that has never been, the disabled that has never been up an issue. In further questioning from Montgomery's attorneys directed towards Clerk Shepard, they asked her on a number, number of occasions about her knowledge about how many voters that her husband, Larry Shepard, assisted with or helped them in voting. There was also some discussion and remarks on behalf of Shepard that the FBI has subpoenaed as recent as two weeks ago uh, through her office fiscal court minutes and absentee stubs. And there, there was also... Uh, some discussion that she had been preparing some materials for a grand jury. Specifically, Shepard was questioned about a comparison that she had compiled of the list of voters with the list of applications for absentee votes submitted by their voters that she was putting together for her presentation, she said, before a grand jury, and why absentee applications would be missing from what the materials that were forwarded to the Attorney General's office. Did you recently do a comparison? Of this list of voters issued absentee ballots with the applications uh, contained in volume uh, two through four. Well, not in your volume, but with the applications that I had in my possession. Where did you receive those applications? Those were the copies that I made for the grand jury. Copies that you made for the grand jury? Yeah. Were all of those equally distributed to the Attorney General's office in response to the subpoena? Yeah. But the Attorney General got the originals. So the Attorney General got the originals of it? And I'd already made my copies to do you know if there would be any reason why absentee applications would be missing from the production of those things in the Attorney General's office as opposed to yours? No, I don't have any idea. So there should be a complete set? It should be exactly what I have. My copies were made from their copies. From their originals. I see. So your copies were made from the originals. Exactly. Now, how long did you do this comparison? 
because after I saw the jury's uh, summary judgment, said that I had all those explanations missing, I wanted to prove to myself that those were in fact there. How did you get some person? I went through them page by page, name by name, and referring to the possibilities that I had here. And I had entry that day. Uh, all the materials were visible and up front to all board members and everyone there at all times. There were no issues that were not resolved. There were voters for uh, John Montgomery were, who were also personally identified on those absentee applications, meaning that he, as well as Harden, she claimed, would have absentee applications that were not completely filled out as to where uh, they were either going to be on election day or there were other parts of that application which were not filled in. She also testified that she didn't vote for Charles Harden in exchange for a uh, tile that was replaced or any work that was done on her property. And that she considered all the election uh, basically to be fair and upfront and honest from start to finish. Those last remarks coming on behalf of or following questions asked by attorneys representing the Board of Elections, which would include Shepard. Is that the county road that leads up to your home? Yes. Did you sell your vote? Oh. Did you vote for Doc Hart because of anything associated with gravel on your property? Absolutely not. Because they, they fixed the, the tile? Absolutely not. You know why they fixed the top? The guy fixed the top? It was collapsing. And because it was collapsing, it was blocking water from going through the drain, is that right? Yes. And it was affecting people upstream? Yes. You didn't vote for anybody because they did that, did you? No. Did anybody say, hey, we're now, I'm going to do this for you? No. No. As a global question, last question I have. Last two or three. Do you believe this election was fair? Yes. Did you do all that you could do to make sure that this was an open and honest and fair election? Yes. Do you believe the Board of Elections did anything untoward, anything, any misconduct? No, absolutely not. Did they act in dishonesty in any way? No. Did Justin Williams act dishonest? No. Did Sidney Sider act dishonest? No. Lisa Montgomery? No. Any of the elections officials? Any in any person. No. You believe this election should be upheld? Yes. Nothing further on. After these messages, we'll hear from a, another individual to testify, a political analyst who offered some testimony and opinion on the absentee count and vote as it pertains to McGoffin County in comparison to other parts of the state. I'll be right back. A whole lot of absentee ballots, so therefore there's all kinds of smoke. He never says in his report anything about any other race. He, he, he says Doc Harden didn't have a did, didn't have a um, a process to get to drive up the absentee voter. He, he doesn't say anything about any other race. So I think he's not qualified to the extent that he would be judged. Your Honor can look at the numbers and, and reach the same conclusion or reach your own conclusion based on the exact same information. Those remarks were a portion of the objection to calling a Mr. Kim Jevedon. Jevedon being called, of course, by Montgomery's counsel. The objection, as you heard, came at him testifying and entering into testimony, opinion, and or information based on his profession and what his thoughts were and analysis was of the election. He said, as on the stand and on in testimony that he is an election analyst, he is a campaign operative and also a political consultant. He has been, he says, employed in that field uh, for a great many years, has worked on a variety of campaigns and offered a variety of information, and, and I'm using a very generic term to describe, but he had a long list of credentials that he went through, the judge heard, and then allowed him to testify. We're looking at the uh, absentee voters, uh, Doc, can you make a projection as to what you would expect to see in the 2014 general election? Typically, I would expect that the absentees would generally uh, track the election day results uh, with a range of typically, in my experience, what I see is three that eight. Maybe 10%. Um, 
one way or the other. Um, but in, when I look at analyze the McGoffin County absentee numbers and results compared to the uh, vote on election day in the precinct closure, for instance. Um, Mr. Hartman carried 46% of the vote. Mr. Montgomery carried 54. This is technically, I think, is 7.8%, 7.8%. Um, I, I mean, that's, that percentage is not close. It's not a nail biter. It's not uh, where typically I would expect if a candidate won with a large sample size, a universe of 5,000, uh, 300 and some of that, I know it's exactly, but you have a sample size of 5,300, give or take, 400, uh, give or take, that that, that large sample should not, you know, it should be pretty reflective of uh, the county vote, the total vote at large. And it, so, so this one I understand. Uh, with regards to uh, the absentee ballots that were passed in the margins by which each candidate won in the absentee ballots versus the precinct, you believe that there was a significant swing? Uh, Dramatic swing in the, the, in the uh, precincts on election day. Montgomery was plus eight absentees. Mr. Harden was plus 30. So we have a 46 point swing from what the results were in the, in the polling machines on election day and what they were in the absentee. To me, that's far beyond what I would expect based on my experience. I tried, to, I went back and tried to dig a little deeper into the, the election results by the precincts. And when I looked at that, uh, you see that uh, Mr. Montgomery carried 10 of the 14 precincts. So that tells me that when someone carries 10 of 14 precincts, Mr. Hart carries less than a third of the precincts. Um, it's pretty, Broad spread in terms of the supporting vote. But I thought, let me look at these four precincts in which Mr. Harden did carry. Of the four precincts, uh, Mr. Harden carried the vote, I believe, by 19%. It's a healthy margin. But it's absentees for double that. So they were double even his best precinct. Best now at this time I'm 30 minutes into the program and if any of our carriers have to switch to regular programming uh, at this time we will be airing the remainder of this program another three or four minutes at the 11 o'clock hour but to carry on with some more remarks on behalf of Mr. Jevitt and he says those numbers that he was referring to were far outside anything he could ever expect to see as an analyst in referring to McGoffin County's absentee vote he referred to the primary of last year as there being about 5,600 votes cast in McGoffin County with 775 of those being absentees. In the November election just a couple of months ago, there were more than 6,500 votes and 1,145 of those were absentees in the judges race. So from the May primary to the November election, there was a voter increase of about 14% or 921 more votes in November than in May. But out of those 921 more votes, nearly half of those were absentees. 373 actually of those 921 were absentee votes. He says that too, unlike any tracking that he's ever witnessed or seen as an analyst. He also referred to the 2012 election as being one in McGoffin County that could be looked at as not having any local races, and that in the 2012 election, McGoffin County, like other surrounding counties, had about a 5% absentee vote, which is very similar to all other counties. But last year in the November election, McGoffin County's absentee vote was 18%, while other counties who also had Local elections were still at only that 4 to 5% mark. He said that Floyd County has twice the size or number of 
voters, as does McGoffin, but McGoffin has twice the number of absentee votes. That Pike and Floyd have five times the number of voters of McGoffin when put together, but McGoffin has about the same number of absentee votes for that uh, large of an area. He says that McGoffin County has more absentees cast in the general election this past November than any other county in the geographic region. He also testified that McGoffin County ranks 80th in registered voters out of all 120 Kentucky counties, 60th in the number of votes cast, and 10th in the number of absentees cast. Now, there was some counter on behalf of attorneys representing Hardin and the Board of Elections saying that there were hot races that were on the November ballot that were not on the May prim- May primary ballot, that being those for mayor, council, school board, some local races, which would, may have driven up input or interest on behalf of voters. They also cited some differences as well between the number of absentees and total votes cast in other races like the Allison Grimes, Mitch McConnell race, uh, Senator Brandon Smith, and some others. Now, before I close, the most essential of announcements tonight, and in this one, it's a big one. It's a birthday. Birthdays are a big deal. He's seven today. He's Connor Douglas Slusher, and for mom and dad, grandpa and grandma Allen, Nana sisters, Mary and Isabella, brothers Allen, Alton, and Christopher, happy birthday to you. Happy seventh to Connor Douglas Slusher. And one funeral service announcement this Monday, the second day of February, in honor of Buell Andrew Andy Adams of Parkway Drive, who passed away on yesterday's date, the son of the late Buell and Gladys Adams. He survived by his brother, Larry Edward. And visitation is this evening and any time prior to services. They'll start tomorrow morning at 11 in his honor. Visitation and services, both from the McGoffin County Funeral Home with burial to take place at the Dewey Adams Cemetery on Lick Creek. And for a short and I'll say semi-sweet Licking Valley RECC forecast, i got a low of 19 degrees. That's where we're headed tonight. And if you're watching the early show, I've got 26 out there. And with a light west wind, we feel more like 20 all right now. Wind chill factors will continue to put us well into the teens, the low teens after we reach 19. But those winds will start to calm down by then, 5 to 7, and working their way down to 0 over the next little bit. So keep that in mind. They they will improve. Tomorrow, also an improvement, mostly sunny on your Tuesday. Daytime highs 39. We'll see the sun again on Wednesday. We'll peak at 50 degrees for the first time in the forecast. And then we'll see a chance of some precipitation Wednesday night. Another big cold front, an Arctic front, if you will, comes in here and mixes things up on Wednesday into your Thursday. That's my time. Thank you for being a part of it. Good night.